One of Amy Coney Barrett's former law students, who went on to become the first blind woman to clerk on the Supreme Court, is now sharing her personal and powerful perspective about the judge everyone is talking about. Former Notre Dame law student Laura Wolk wrote a First Things article last week entitled, What I Learned from Amy Coney Barrett. Wolk, who is completely blind, says when her assistive technology did not arrive in time for the start of her law school career, she turned to then law professor Barrett for help, believing Barrett could counsel her on how to have Notre Dame University obtain the technology as quickly as possible. Wolk writes, but she did not merely help me to readjust the burden on my own shoulders. She took it from me and carried it herself. I will never forget the moment when she looked at me from across her desk and said coolly and matter of factly, Laura, this is not your problem anymore. It's mine. Laura Wolk, a former Notre Dame law student of Judge Amy Coney Barrett and the first blind woman to clerk on the Supreme Court, joins us now via Skype. Laura, welcome. You wrote movingly about then-Professor Barrett's impact on your personal and professional life. Can you share with our viewers more details about how Professor Barrett was a mentor to you and what that meant to you? Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. So, as you know, you mentioned that the very first time that I had experience with Professor Barrett, but that was the beginning of a now seven year long mentorship and relationship where time and again, um, Professor Barrett has just been a total champion for me. And, um, you know, I think as a woman in the law, it, it can be a, a, an isolating place sometimes. For me, having a disability on top of that, um, it is rarely the case that I have someone that I can look to who has done the things that I have done um, or want to do um, and can give me guidance. And even though Professor Barrett uh, does, is not blind herself, Judge Barrett, um, I still need to transition into saying that, um, she has such a compassionate and empathic heart. It doesn't matter what the challenge is that her student or her colleague is facing. She is able to um, enter into those experiences with the person. So just as life happens, you know, when I've been moving and feeling overwhelmed or starting a new job, or when I went to the court and I um, struggled in the beginning with wondering whether I, it was, I belonged there, um, Judge Barrett has just always been someone that I know will tell me the truth and someone who I can go to for both advice, but also um, like the pep talks when you need the pep talks. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's it's that it's that combination of both the practical and the empathic that makes her such an amazing friend and mentor. Mm. And Laura, you are a trailblazer in your own right. Can you speak to the importance of having an advocate as you have, you know, both as a woman and as a person who has a disability? Yes, I there. It's so important. I mean, this is advice I give to young uh, women and and blind people all of the time. I mean, like we. The church talks about this, like human beings, we are meant to be interdependent. We are not supposed to carry everything uh, on our own and we're not meant to do, we're not meant to live this journey on our own. And so having an advocate not only is, it's beneficial for both parties. It's, it's helpful to me as the mentee because I'm receiving very practical assistance, but it's also beneficial for the person who is doing the advocating um, because it's through those types of relationships that I think we really come to understand the importance of, of uh, really seeing the person as a human in their full humanity and everything they have to offer. Um, and so for me, it's like, you know, it's not just, like I was saying earlier, it's not just the practical help. It's, it's the fact that you know that someone else is walking this journey with you. And so when you fail, um, you have people to help you up and start again. And when you succeed, I mean, when I got my clerkship on the Supreme Court, one of the best parts of it was that I knew it was not my own success. It was the success of many people. And um, when I called them to share the news and, and, and Professor Barrett among them, their, um, their happiness was, was very genuine because they had played a role and it was partially their success mm -hmm. as well. Laura, there's a lot of media interest surrounding the fact that Judge Barrett is a mother of seven. Uh, speaking as one of her former students, did the size of Amy Coney Barrett's family ever stifle her ability to do her job well? And what do you make of the scrutiny facing her family size? 
Yeah, I I think the the harping on the size of her family is it's not just uh, irrelevant. It's actually really offensive. Um, it sends a message that uh, women should live a particular way, and it is only proper for them to do um, to fulfill certain roles. And I just think that it sends an absolutely terrible message to women um, everywhere to say that if if you want to be a certain type of successful person. Um, you cannot have a large family. And, you know, no, I don't, it absolutely did not stifle. And it, it, it only made us appreciate her more because um, Notre Dame is very wonderful in this way, the law school. Um, professors are encouraged to speak about their family life. We learned a lot about the families of our professors in the classroom, not just Professor Barrett, but many of my professors. And so I think that's a beautiful witness. It's 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 not this idea that, especially for women, when you're in the professional realm, you pretend like you don't have a family, you don't talk about them because what what if people think, oh gosh, she must be so busy. Um, you joyfully talk about your family. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's one, you know, anecdote that I think speaks volumes to Professor Barrett at, that relating to the technology uh, issue that I wrote about, which is that. Uh, she followed up with me at a tailgate before a Notre Dame football game. Mm. Um, And I remember her coming up to me and she was holding one of her children like in her arms and another one of her little girls was, you know, crawling around in the grass and she's talking to me and she's like telling me about what she's done so far and asking me how I'm doing in the, at the same time, she's, you know, telling her little daughter to put her shoes on and, She's, you know, mm. giving her other daughter a snack, right? right. And it's, so it's like, here's this you, woman that I'm just yeah. totally in awe of. Yeah. And you can multitask. You know, you can multitask. Laura, well, thank you so much for your witness and for taking the time to come on this week. Thanks so much. Thank you.